but he's hitting form at the right time. And wow. Murray isn't in form at the moment, lads, and there's no there's no getting away from that. Like it's a big there ball, isn't it? I, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of chat about Casey. I thought he played well at the. Did um, you start him ahead of Murray though? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Like Conor Murray's got a lot of money in the bank over yeah. the years. Like probably <laughs> literally, actually. <laughs> <laughs> literally, <isn't it? laughs> Joe presents House of Rugby. United Rugby Championship, together with Bank of Ireland, proud supporter of the four Irish provinces. Hello and welcome back to House of Rugby URC. Another cracking show for you this week, guys, with plenty of URC action to look back on, including a very interesting affair down in the Kingspan. As always, I'm joined by my good friend, the second best rugby presenter to ever come out of Limerick, <laughs> Mr. Greg O'Shea. It's good to be back, man. It feels like ages since we've been on. Yeah, it does. Two weeks. Two weeks. I and, you. Yeah, sure, look. I missed you too. Yeah. But look, look, look who else is here. Look what the cat dragged in. I, look who's back. I Mr. agreed. Mr. Darren Cave. I agreed to come on the show <laughs> um, at halftime in Toulouse away. And then, like, you know, six days later, Ulster shambles and I couldn't get out of it. So that's the reason I'm here. Uh, you look great, though. Good to see the stash is back. Yeah, it's still there. Yeah. It's still hanging in there. It's two years. I know it looks dreadful, but uh, I don't know. I get a lot of aggro, but it's kind of like um, it's a midlife crisis. No, I love it, man. Yeah, but I like that, that Ron Burgundy impersonation, that pays the bills. Like, I mean, you're getting gigs all over the country doing that, do you? It does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll probably have uh, spotted as well um, that Nathan Doak isn't here. We mentioned during the week that he would be uh, on the show this week. But unfortunately, Nathan isn't well and we wish him the best of luck and hope to have him on later on in the series. Well, he, he managed to get out of it after the result of the weekend. <laughs> he was like, yeah, no worries. I'll come on. I'll come on Sunday. Talk about dishing up Munster. Nah, <laughs> afraid, no of two, afraid of two months of lads and what we're going to what we're going to say and what we're going to do to him. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's going to be two v two. Now we're just going to bully down. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much going to be it for the next forty minutes. Like, but yeah, yeah. Uh, continuing with the bullying, let's get straight into it. You were uh, at the at the game on on Friday. You were uh, working for uh, a panels in RTE. Uh, good good result, wasn't it? I was on RTE. Yes, um, it was a dreadful result. I um, I was like genuinely. I thought. Um, it is so hard to compete in both competitions. And I did think in the group at Ulster, they would be thinking, well, do you know what? You know, Munster now distracted by the Champions Cup. Leinster distracted by Champions Cup. Like this is a huge opportunity. And I thought, I didn't even think Munster played that well. I just thought they were really professional. Didn't really do a lot wrong. And Ulster just, I think Ulster just kind of beat themselves, you know? So it was really disappointing from an Ulster point of view. Yeah, yeah, great for Munster though. We've leapfrogged Munster. Ulster now in the third place in the URC. Mm. Ulster gone down to fifth, which is great. Uh, <laughs> but no. <laughs> but it, it must be frustrating for Ulster because I remember uh, listening to Stephen Ferris talk about it on Premier Sports as well. And this seems to happen a lot with Ulster where you have a cracking like first half, first three quarters of the season. Ulster looked unbelievable this year. And all of a sudden, as you said, it's basically six days now. It's looking like it's all falling apart again. Yeah, genuinely, you know, after beating Toulouse away, People in Ulster were going like, well, if we, we if we end up home to Munster, like we've got a real good shot of getting a semi-final and then you're second in the league and you're kind of thinking, right, that's you home in the quarters and semis if you get it. Then you're, obviously you get a little ahead of yourself. Um, and yeah, bang. And it's all changed and um, home advantage in these playoffs in the URC is going to be huge. So where everyone finishes is going to be really, really important. Yeah. Uh, we found out the other day that whoever tops the table is going to get a home final if they get that far, which is likely to be our mates in Dublin. Yeah. Um, but it makes a big difference. Like if Ulster end up, like they've got to go to Edinburgh now, who are right in the middle of this. Um, you know, if they end up getting through in fifth or sixth, you could end up, you know, down away at the Stormers in the quarterfinals. It's a big, big difference. Yeah. From Munster point of view, like, I say fair play to them. Like they're just like, I said on TV on Friday, I just feel like Ulster lose games, they should win, and Munster the opposite. Like, Munster just get it done. And I think I have been quite critical of Munster's attack and the Stephen Larkham impact on yeah. them. But again, I looked at the weekend, they've scored, like I think it's 55 tries, now 56, 57 in the league, which is second only to Leinster. Before that game, they'd scored 15 tries more than Ulster, mm -hmm. which is the same gap as there has been Ulster and Benetton. You know, so... Like, Munster, I don't know, they're doing something right, but they're in a really, really good place, I thought. Um, more so up front. <clears throat> really interesting to see some of those younger guys mm. come through. Guys we like Kendall and stuff coming in, like, yeah. He was brilliant. Um, Ahern, the bench. Ahern ended Ahern. up on the bench. I, mm. I think he was sick, but, or I, I'm not sure what happened. Um, 
Uh, just loads of young guys, even like Jack O'Donoghue. You know, he's not young, but it's sort of a, from a captaincy point of view. So yeah, from yeah. a monster point of view, I think it's like it's really, really, it's really exciting for them. Yeah. What, what do you think it is, Greg? I mean, you were, well, both of us were pretty critical of Munster there two weeks ago, like, and we were off for the last couple of weeks, and now we're coming back, and they've just beaten Exeter pretty comfortably, yeah. and, and emphatically in Toma Park. Now they're after beating Ulster away. I mean, is it down to the fact that Roundtree is now in place? And yeah. maybe he's doing a bit more behind the scenes, do you think? And we were quite critical of him against Leinster when Leinster came down and beat us in Tolman Park. But I just thought the decision making on that day was really poor. But I did say in that show, I was like, I think Munster can beat Exeter at home. Mm. And they went out and did it in the second fixture and they won on aggregate and they played really well. Mm. But it, it came down to the basics, I feel, which sounds really cliche. But like Joey Carberry kicked all his kicks against Exeter, which was really good. He kicked unbelievably against Ulster as well. Yeah. Just not... Uh, taking up those three points is massive. Like we just stay in the fight, and then they, against Ulster, they just took their opportunities. They had that one phase play where um, they went out the back, and Chris Farrell went through and put Keith Earls away. Yeah, just taking their opportunities, which is great to see. I think that's why Munster have scored so many tries this year. When they get their opportunities, they take them, even though it's, it could be arguably it's not as entertaining as Ulster tries or Connacht tries or Leinster tries. But you say Munster get it done, like their four pack mm. always just mull over, get a try. Stephen Archer with a try, like it's not exciting, mm. but it works. Yeah. Um. So they just and they just like. I just feel like Munster are really good at letting the opposition just beat themselves. Mm. Like, just go out. And, like, I thought in defence, like, they just looked really organised. I thought they made Ulster's attack. I did think Ulster's attack was poor, but I thought they made it look really poor. Um, they just were so organised, really, um, yeah. like, really connected. There was no, like, and it just looked like, I felt like when Ulster had the ball, Munster looked very, very relaxed. And it was only at the end when Ulster got a bit of traction through the mall and the yellow card and a bit of pressure came that Ulster actually get mm. any traction in the game. And you mentioned... Carberry, I think it's great. I've always kind of felt from an Irish point of view that he is the guy. He mm. is going to be the guy with, with Johnny. Um, I don't know why. I, I've said before, I always have this in my head, that Gloucester performance from like three years ago. Yeah, I remember that game. Yeah. And I just, I struggle, I just struggle to forget how well Joey Carberry played that day. And I remember, and I still think, going back to that last World Cup, you know, if he was a, he was like, he had a shocking season, yeah. injuries, he was nothing like where he could be. And I just think if Ireland are going to go and go Pete at a World Cup, he's the guy that mm. is going to push Johnny or step in if Johnny gets injured. Or, um, so I think from an Irish point of view and a monster point of view, it's really good to see him. I didn't think he was like, he did anything spectacular. He just controlled the game really well. That's what I think he's doing really well as he's getting a bit older. He's like, he's much more controlled. You're not noticing him in games as much, which is yeah. a good thing, which means he's doing his job as a 10. He's distributing. He took that try lovely against Exeter, showed his, his uh, agility. But I just think he's kicking. He's mm. just kicking it from all over the pitch. Was, I, I think he's linking up really well as well. And you might not like this. He's linked up really well this week and in the second half last week with Craig Casey. Yeah. I think, I mean, I don't think Murray was great in that first half against Exeter. And you saw the weekend with Casey starting like, he really did make a difference, mm. and is he perhaps like? I mean, I think he planted that nine jersey come to Toulouse game. Do you think? I think he could. Like the way he's playing at the moment, he's hitting form at the right time. And wow, Murray isn't in form at the moment. Lads, and there's no, there's no getting away from that. Like it's a big there call, isn't, isn't it? I, I mean, there's know. a lot of there's a lot of chat about Casey. <laughs> I thought he played well at the. Um, Do you start him ahead of Murray though? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Like Conor Murray's got a lot of money in the bank over yeah. the years. Like probably <laughs> literally, actually. <laughs> <laughs> literally, <yeah. laughs> but I, I, I meant in terms of experience. Yeah, uh, I know. he's starting, man. He's yeah, just, I think he's. Probably, oh, you probably, love Murray. Will stop? I think Murray's probably likely to start, but again. Like Casey, he, he looks a really, really, really good player. Yeah, no, play well the weekend. The thing with Casey is he has a noticeable impact when he comes off the bench. Like he's just the speed of the game. Mm. He, like Murray doesn't really have that extra speed that Casey brings on. So I think Murray's going to start. But it's not about who's starting against Toulouse. We have to talk about the actual Ulster game. Um, and I, I, thought, thought, I thought we were done talking about it. No, we're not. <laughs> we haven't even got into it, man. <laughs> the, I, Alex Kendellan, lads, what a player. Like how good is he? He's just coming out of nowhere, lads. I mean, he got a couple of games over in South Africa and then like he really impressed. I know we lost yeah. and got battered, but he really impressed in that Leinster game off the bench when Coombs got injured early on. And he looks like a serious yeah, talent. He got man of the match the week. And like he's not like he's a big lad, but he's not that big lad when it comes to back rowers. He no. just puts his weight around, tackles the efforts he's putting in. He's incredible. Like, and same with Jack O'Donnell, who had a really good game again. Um, yeah, I thought Kendall knows one time. I actually think it ended up being an Ulster penalty, but he fielded the ball in the backfield for Munster and he ran it back. And I was actually, I was like looking, because I was at pitch side and I was like, who's that? You know, because he looked so like, back um, <laughs> just looked real. I just, yeah, I was like, what position is this guy? Because he's huge, but he's moving with such agility and he took the ball. Um, I think he looks a really, and again, like I said, like, okay, there's a couple of older heads still in that pack, but I think, is he like, what is he, like 20, 20? He's the Irish, he was the 20s um, captain there, was it last year? The he's 21, so, so like, all he is, yeah. loads, to be, loads to be excited about. I think he looks 
a really good player. Yeah, do, do you think the old sir? Do you think it comes down a small bit to their like, to a bit of a hangover from the Toulouse game because they were <clears> they <throat> played 160 minutes of rugby and lost to Toulouse with a try in the last minute and lose two legs overall by one point. Yeah, that was like, heartbreaking. That man. is, you couldn't pick a worse way to lose it. <laughs> I watched yeah. the highlights again today. I was like, oh, imagine being an Ulster man watching that. And like, the red card and stuff at the end. Like, I think that was that's in the players' head all week. The players' heads all week. Look, like, <sighs> I mean. <coughs> yes, I no, I like. I thought we were going to get a huge reaction. I thought Ulster were going to beat Munster, not comfortably, but I, I didn't foresee the game going like that. I just felt like Ulster would have been, um, as I said, used it as a positive. Um, I spoke about it a little on TV at the weekend. I think they really, really um, lack a second number ten um, mm -hmm. in terms of controlling the game. The Toulouse game, like Tom O'Toole got red carded, but Billy Burns went off a concussion at a very similar time and. I just feel like for three or four years, Ulster have like, you know, maybe chucked John Cooney in mm. uh, in in South Africa. Nathan Doak ended up at ten for a bit. Why aren't um, they playing Ian Madigan? Yeah, well, this I was about is, to say, what's going even on Even if there, you look like... back, like Bill Johnson was there, Johnny McPhillips was there. They just haven't um, settled on like a a backup ten. Like when Billy Burns is not playing, and Billy Burns comes in for a bit of criticism, which I actually think is unfair. I think his. I think what he does for kind of what you said about Joey, it's not always the scene stuff. Yeah. And if you look at how that Ulster team, like a lot of those outside backs are excelling, there's no real acknowledgement for the fact, well, who's given it to them in space? And people mm. say, oh, he, he plays deep and he shifts it and he doesn't play at the line. And it's, but like, look at Rob Balakin, look at James Hume, look at Michael Laurie from fullback. They're carving it. Mm. Um, and I just don't think that Michael Laurie um, is as naturally, I know he played 10 in school in there for Ulster in terms of, managing a team around the pitch and exiting well and maybe you have 14 players mm. so you need to mix up your attack start using short side start kicking them behind all that kind of stuff and he hasn't played there yeah he's so not I think, in like yeah to, to go like 20 minutes left in that moment to lose your 10 and to, and to lose and to chuck a guy in there who's like i think i heard he started like four or five games at 10 for mm. ulster ever and then to go into the monster game the next biggest game of the season and you know you've signed Ian Madigan. He's probably getting paid a few quid, yes. and you haven't it's used international him. ten. Like this guy's proven yeah. himself. He hasn't played at Ulster really at all since no. he's been there. I, just, I think that whole dynamic. I think that's something that Ulster have got wrong. Is it an injury thing at Madigan, or is he just not getting the pick for the starting position? He simply he came off the bench the weekend, like, yeah. and he made a noticeable difference when he came on. So I, I think it's behind the scenes. That loose game, I do think, I do think suits him quite a lot. But I, I don't think he has been injured a lot at yeah. Ulster for whatever reason. Um, he, he just hasn't played a lot. Um, no, I think so it's mad. Do you think it, I, yeah. I think it's strange as well. Either before, before he left, or before he went, I can't remember where he went playing. He went to Bristol. Bristol. He went to Bordeaux first. Bordeaux, then, Bristol. then he went to Bristol. Yeah. Like, he but. was the second choice ten against like, Johnny yeah. for years, and he was class. Like, I just remember just don't see why else don't use him. Put Lowry at fifteen. Yeah. Who started fifteen? Stuart Moore. Was it? Stuart Moore, Stuart, yeah. which again was a bit of a risk. He'd had a great game there against like a, a Cardiff third team a couple of months ago, but he's not a fullback. He's a centre. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would have been thinking. You know, Laurie at fullback and and somebody, but even at then, like Madigan hasn't played. It's just how Ulster have got to the mm. business end of the season, and Billy Burns could be out for two or three weeks or more with a concussion. And it's mm. like, well, who? You know, Mikey Laurie twice in a row now hasn't done the job. So what are you doing next week? Send so you're yeah. away to Edinburgh. You can't somebody you're, else. You have to start or... Madigan away to Edinburgh in that situation. You can't throw Laurie in there again or yeah. someone else. It doesn't make any sense because mm. they're two must-win games, as you said. Now, look. Yeah. Well, I thought on paper as well, the two backlines going up against each other. You're going against an international monster backline, like yeah. you've Chris Farrell. You have Delanda, you have Joey, you have Shane Daly, who's an Irish cap, you have yeah. Keith Earls. Like, yeah. unbelievable Irish backline there. Casey going as well. up against, yeah. yeah, Casey, and then a, just a mixture bag of Ulster. Just weird selection, I thought. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't have agreed with it now. And credit, I think, to Chris Farrell, actually, because he's probably had a sort of like, it wasn't that long ago he was in that one Irish centre who was trying to break into the, the three kind of yeah. top dogs, whatever you want to call them. And uh, he was at the World Cup. Yeah. And the last sort of six months, like James Hume has come from nowhere. And the gap, like James Hume's probably closer to the top three than, than Chris Farrell is to, to him. And yeah, so I think him. he would have enjoyed the, the weekend. He played yeah. well. and um, He had a good game, yeah. That, that play for the Earl's try was just like, it's just really, really top drawer centre play. Yeah. So I think that's... Um, sure he got a bit of pace for it as well for Big Lad, didn't he? Chris yeah, he is. Listen, that's the thing about him. And I remember when he was in Austria, he's 
think he's a lovely passer. That actually wasn't his best ball off the left. But um, <laughs> Thursday, yeah. Yeah, or else, he picked it off the, or else he lost the hamstring <laughs> as he scooped it off his boot laces. <laughs> I think it's 61 tries or earlier. Is there 67? Something like that, yeah. Most I mean, tries ever. I, people, I, I, it annoys me so much when people try and write off key girls. And they were trying to write him off there again after the Six Nations saying, oh, he's finished. And mm. a, lot of, a lot of Munster player, Lim people are writing him off. I mean, if it wasn't for that tackle in the first leg against Exeter, I don't think Munster would be in the, in the quarterfinals of the Champions Cup. I really don't, because yeah. it was that important and how well he played in the second leg and how well he played there. Yeah. Keith Earls ain't finished yet. I, Not at all. You know, I sometimes wonder, am I a little biased? Because I was the same age grade as him. So I've just, like, I've known him for, like, you know, now mid-30s. I've probably known the guy half my life and he's just a, such a nice guy. Yeah. But there's actually not many players that I can think of who, Rob Carney's probably another one, who's, like, consistently had to reprove himself. Yeah. Like, I felt like the whole way through Earls' career, I meet people and they're like, yeah, I don't rate Keith Earls. And I'm like, <laughs> honestly, this guy, like... He's one of the best players for the last he's, 10 years. Honestly, he, like... Uh, there'll be people listening to this podcast going, I don't rate Keith Earls, Darren Keith's yeah. full of it. I'm telling you, I've played with him, trained with him, against him. He's an unbelievable rugby player. He is electric and still aged. I'm 30, he's 34. He's so quick. He's so intelligent. He's physical. Like, he can kick the ball. He can get up in the air. Yeah. He's a really good leader. Um, I think he's a brilliant player. And I just think... He's had a, he gets a lot of shit, doesn't he? He does. Mm. I think he's one of those players that you won't appreciate how good he was until he yeah. retired. He's and you'll look back and you'll go, he's loved in Limerick. He's yeah, loved in Limerick, loved yeah, the yeah. Monster. It's outside, people just yeah. don't think, don't rate him. When he's in the Irish setup, people yeah. don't yeah. think he should be there. But I'm like, he's incredible. I was in the academy for four years at Munster, and he was I learned so much off him. He'd be yeah. bring me to the side, teach me agility drills, little things that I was like, oh great, try this. Like it's like such a nice guy, always so welcoming. And the, how fast he was at his age. He was like fastest than everyone else. And no one really like knows that about him, I think. But anytime you hear someone like you just said yeah. it there when you were in the Irish camp and stuff with him. I remember hearing uh, Brian O'Driscoll speaking about him, Sexton, O'Gara. Anyone that's played in training, like, who is the best player you yeah. train with? Who is the best player you've been alongside in the camp? Like, Keith Erds. Every time the answer is Keith Erds. Yeah. That's how good he was. He's but so rated by his, his But if his you're colleagues. in the pub after, uh, you know, <laughs> they've been Joe Bloggs, like from yeah. Tarrant Uri, he's a 12 pounds, <laughs> 60 scrap. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. I think he's just an unbelievable guy. Oh. We can but, um, talk about them for ages. Two, two other bit of two other bits of big news from Munster while we were away. So the head coach situation is sorted out. Graham Roundtree is taking over. Um, I don't know if they had done lots of interviews or if they couldn't get their man and decide to bring a Roundtree in, or maybe he was the outstanding candidate. But personally, as a Munster fan, I think it's a good a good appointment. I don't know, Greg, what do you think? Yeah, you, I you think it's good. It? it keeps a bit of consistency in the coach, coaching setup. They all know him. Like obviously, he's, he's obviously uh, gets on with the lads well. He seems to do all right. But this is first proper head coach. This is his first, yeah. But like he does have a, like I mean, he's coached with England. He's coached with the Lions. He's coached with was it Georgia? He coached with well at the, yeah. at the World Cup. He does have. Or it's just strange Ridiculous that he has league. such a long CV of like assistant jobs. Yeah, that yeah. it seems that like you know it's strange it hasn't maybe come early for him. But it, mm. it does seem like a. I heard him, I think it was an interview with him chatting about Limerick. He sounds the, like he sounds like he loves it down there. He bought a house there and everything like so. Like, like he, he bought a house there a couple of years ago. I remember I said on the show, he actually bought CJ Stander's house when CJ Stander left right. out in Castle Connell. So that's oh, so he's so, loaded as well. So he's a few good there as well. Like, but that, that's why yeah. I think like, everyone knew he was going to stay when everything was up in the air because he bought a house. But like he said himself that he wants to bring in, and he's already been speaking to coaches for the last few months as part of his backroom team, that are going to be very similar to him. So like he to me comes across as very old fashioned style. I think he really old stock. So who's going to go for his his background at Leicester? I think he really like Leicester and Munster. I think are two clubs that there are a lot of similarities in. Like yeah. I know Munster's not a town, but like the idea it's that fan you base, know, yeah, 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 the people, uh, the way they play, the sort of values of the clubs, mm. I could see, and they're real rugby places. You know, I could see mm. a lot of similarities, and I think it's going to be really interesting to see who he appoints because obviously being a prop. Like there are going to be certain parts of the game that he just doesn't have. A, yeah, it would be unfair to say he doesn't have a clue about, but he's going to need help. And again, really interesting to see. Is he like my instinct from an outsider would have been that he would look for monster people. He would look for your Prendergast. He would look for your Leamies. These kind of guys. Mm. Um, I don't think like O'Gara's and the O'Connells are, are, are in that kind of space. But um, and then a lot of people think it'll be the opposite. He'll bring people you know, in. Yeah, right away. In so. Yeah, well, I, 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 the backs coach is going to be. That's a big mm. appointment. Like as you said, he's a prop. He doesn't like he obviously knows he's talking about, but not down to like fine details. Yeah. Like, so, and this day and age in coaching staff, you need 
everyone working together. You have to have one guy calling just, on the Just what I said, I found that very interesting. When I spoke to Agar a few weeks ago, I asked him about the coaching job and how it works. He said, rugby, he said, is becoming a lot more like football and like soccer, right? It's not about going away and picking out the best backs coach, the best forwards coach. It's you, you pick a team of coaches based on what kind of style of rugby you want to play. So mm. like the way Munster just went out and goes, okay, round three, Fran Grant, <laughs> Larkham. Yeah. All probably class coaches in their individual right, but they're all thinking on a different, different level and they've all got different game plans. For, and none of those plans seem to work for Munster. And sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. If you have one cohesive group of three to four guys who go, this is how we're playing and they train and coach that way, mm. it's going to make a difference. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I'd be surprised if the new the, the ticket was, was didn't contain the likes of a Limi or like just because I think that's just what my perception of Munster is, you know, mm. that they'll want somebody. Costello could get promoted possibly. Yeah. Again, another example, just... I don't know uh, what I know about Munster, except how no, you, I do how think, yeah. well. <laughs> I do think that it should go that along that. Obviously, Jerry Flannery or Felix Jones won't come back after no, them losing their contract. No. But something like that. Keep it home. and uh, see, But Munster in a good place at the moment. Like, yeah, so hope it yeah. keeps going that There's way. There's another signing for Munster as well. I don't know if you agree with this or not. Another centre is coming in. Uh, Antoine Flich from Bristol. But this fella has an Irish granny though. So mm. he can actually play for Ireland. But same again. We're going out now bringing a centre in. Even though we've got... Guys yeah. like Alex McHenry and stuff, as you mentioned in the past, who were there, and even like uh, you've got Fekato coming in next year as well. What's yeah. going to happen there now? Like, Zelanda's we... gone, Fekato is coming in, this guy's coming in from Bristol. Yeah. He doesn't even start for Bristol. No. He's 25 years old, he's French, Irish qualified, I think he's also English qualified. I think so. I don't know, obviously, Roundtree must know him, he must have a good CV, but. Looks like a big ladder, right? Why, <laughs> why do we need him? Like, I don't understand. Unless sure. the IRFU are going, we're going to bring this guy in and he's going to play for Ireland in the next couple of years. What's the point? Why, yeah. Like, getting rid of Alex. Unless he's a superstar, or, like, so like, like you can understand yeah. bringing in fellas like James Lowe who are like, okay, this guy's going to play international rugby. That's why we're bringing him in. Yeah. Do you ever feel sorry for Roy Scannell? Uh, I don't understand. Like, he's over like, 100 caps for Munster. Yeah, no, no, yeah. but I've got, I just, I kind of always thought, like, I think he's a good, like, I just think he's a good player and I'm always like, but play. he seems like he's, um, I don't know. He seems to never be enough for Munster. It has yeah. to be. You have to bring someone in. But he was. Yeah, he's actually on the show next week. I won't be here next week, and I'm be filling in. I'm going to ask him. Rory Scannell is going to be in next week, so yeah. you can have and see, see what he thinks. Like it'll but, be interesting to hear. When Rory Scannell first, what do you think about uh, all the centres <laughs> and Munster keep signing? Because I remember I was delighted when Ulster signed Jarrett Payne. <laughs> uh, we got to swim in the full back. You were grand. <laughs> yeah, when Rory when Rory Scannell first broke into the senior squad, he was starting the whole time. He started yeah, the European Cup job. games and all that. He just, I suppose, he's, it's, he's it's a very, very good player. He's class. Very good he's unbelievable. I get the impression that like he doesn't just suit. The Munster way in that just size. Mm. I always have it in my head that Munster had such success with like Halstead, you know, back way back. Way. And that is like center. what you do. Like that's what you. That is how number twelve is played. It's not like do you know what I mean? It doesn't really crash ball. Yeah, big <laughs> midfielders. Yeah, yeah. yeah. again, yeah. Rory Rory. nonsense. But that's what the perception I always have. Rory's right. very skillful. Yeah, he's a class player. Yeah. But I just, I just don't get why we bring these guys in. When they, and then you have fellas like Alex McHenry, Dan Gog, and Rory Scanlon. All these guys sitting Dan there. Dan Gog, and there's another guy. Yeah. Like, like they, guys, guys, they have to play. Like. like they're Irish guys. They're young guys. Why are you signing this lad from Bristol? Like I don't know. And it's I not just, like as in like I mean uh, at the moment when you look at the centres like Fekitoa, obviously will be won't play international. Maybe the odd game or Tonga. Farrell is out of the Irish picture at the moment. It's like none of those centres are going to be away for Six yeah. Nations. We have all our centres for the Six Nations. Farrell might get called up, might not. But the way Hume is playing at the moment, he probably won't unless yeah. he really kicks in. So you're, you have how many centres there? Like five, exactly. six centres. And you've Shane Daly can play there, Alex McHenry can play there. Peter like, can play there. Peter can play there. <laughs> no, let's just sign another centre. Like it's just, it's just silly. But at least he's Irish qualified, so it makes it kind of okay. Yeah. So we had, we had to, we had to finish that section. We were giving all about once or a small bit. We were all praised for him. I we did laughed. well. I was like, forget about that. Forget about them stuff in Ulster. Let's slag them off. Yeah, <laughs> no, we have to get a small bit in at the end. No, we but, love once. Sure we're talking about the homegrown exactly. talent there. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. But we'll move on. We'll move on. Uh, another one of the Irish provinces were in action. Uh, poor old Leinster have finally been defeated. Yeah, man. Shock, shock horror. Twenty-eight, twenty-three. But over like, against the Sharks over in South Africa. So like if it's only two games the South African sides have lost at home in the whole block. Like what is it like 20 something games? Wow. Scandalous. That's some stat. Yeah. Yeah, the Leinster team is questionable now. They've sent over a lot of young fellas. But I kind of looked at it again and they have fellas like Reese Ruddock there, Porter was there, Kieran Frawley's played so many games for Leinster now. So it wasn't. It's no such thing as a second. A second That's Leinster team happens. is pretty much a first team for anyone else. What about Leinster sending the seconds and you're like, hold yeah. on. Like, <laughs> like, like 17 internationals. <laughs> <laughs> These 50 caps. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's true yeah. though. Like, hold, hold, I guarantee you, if we look back over the team, I bet you there's probably 13 or 14 internationals there. But we we Easy, call it man. the second team. Like. Yeah, no. They 
it was still a, it was still a class team. Like it's just it's hard going down to South Africa and winning now. Yeah. And they played well. Like they scored a nice couple of tries. Um, what's his name on the wing? Uh, Tommy uh, Tommy O'Brien yeah. had another great game. Yeah, we yeah. actually have the little cats coming up in our try the, the week. The, the excellent try he scored. Yeah, he's on the super yeah, last few weeks. You can understand why they've done it um, because, like, ultimately, like they're going to finish top. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's no there's yeah. no prize for finishing clear, 14 there? points clear, 28 <laughs> points clear. Like, do you know what I mean? You still mm, get, yeah. and like they're going to get that position. They have a huge number of players, and uh, listen, it is it um, in two. They have a second game in South Africa, and then they have that game against Leicester. And they are, Leinster are probably, um, like I don't think Munster are capable in terms of depth of winning both trophies. I don't think they have enough players to go and win, like, you know, win a quarterfinal one week and then jump into the other. And like, they just don't have enough players. I don't think they do that. Leinster do. So they're looking at this going, you know, they're probably looking. Like this year, in, in, in like, is it eight? You need to win eight knockout games. To win both trophies, like it's eight it's extra fixtures, it's huge amount of it's rugby. A lot of cup rugby as well. Like, yeah, uh, mentally. Uh, so they're sitting back and they're going right. They're 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 now sort of forecasting. Now two of those games are gone, but they're expecting to play six extra games. So to me, it's really come as no surprise. And like that team, like you know, they got a losing bonus point. They nearly won, and yeah. like next there was, week, there some huge decisions went win. against them. In fairness, like you had that TMO decision at the end, like where where. Um, who was it? It was uh, Alato was, was, was going in and then one of the Sharks players dived in head first to stop, to stop him. Like. And yeah. if they checked it on the TMO, like, I mean, it was a try. Like, it was a penalty try, if anything. Like, and then you had that incident of the a, fest, a, the, a fairly fassy offload like, and he was clearly in touch when they went back and checked it. So they still, That was some offload though. It was. See, man, it was see that? He's falling into touch and he throws the ball out around his back. Yeah. Well, he should have given it to him just for the skill alone. He like. did, he contained, but he was, he was in touch, but yeah. he got away with it. Like, but. Um, and then there was also an intercept try, man. PP um, scored an intercept try, so that's another seven points just there. So... Like, it might have been Leinster's second team, but they still played well. Like, and they, as you said, they could win next week. And they have so much rugby coming up. Like, so it don't, it's understandable why they're playing. Colin guys. got his way then as well. It was, I thought, found it funny there last week when Colin came out and was like, they still hadn't decided what's going to happen with the finals. And he was like, well, if you finish top, then you should be getting a home, a home final. Why should we have to travel to, to South Africa? And he got his way now because he knew they were going to finish first anyway. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, listen, just, like, who's going to beat Leinster in Dublin? Like, no matter what happens now, like it's this kind of thing that annoys me like, a little bit about the URC. I know on any given day, like uh, anyone can win, like but no matter what final we get, it's more than likely going to be Leinster in the final at home. Who's going to beat them? Yeah, but that's just because they're so good, man. Like, I know, I know. Mm. I'm just saying it's it's. I know it's, I'm not fair enough. Out, like, yeah, it's unfortunate. Like that's. I just, oh, don't, just the way I can't see past Leinster not winning yeah. it again, and then it just takes the fun out of it a little bit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and again, I think part of the disappointment from an Ulster point of view was that the only way I see Leinster not winning it is if you catch them on a bad day, yeah. and probably the biggest chance you have of getting them on a bad day is if there's some kind of um, Champions Cup kind of fixture clash, you know, whereby there's a six day turnaround and yeah. they have a huge amount of unavailability and they maybe have to, well, they're going to end up at home for most of the games, but they have to say they have to travel, you know, and play in six days and something, mm. or there's extra time. And then, you know, that's in, it's an anomaly like that that will make them most vulnerable. That's um, clutching the straws as well, like, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, listen, ultimately, if they like ask Connacht what it's like to go and play um, a knockout game in Dublin, like, it's, do you know what I mean? They're yeah. a serious outfit yeah. when they play well, and no doubt in this URC they're going to be really, really tough to beat. If you'd asked me on Friday afternoon, I said I would have said Ulster are most likely did, um, mm. but I was really impressed as as we, I, we just did the last part of the show. I was really impressed with Munster, yeah. um, so I think that at the minute, if anybody's going to do it, it's probably them. A monster to turn yeah. over Leinster. Yeah, I think if anyone's mm. going to do it, I just I feel like anyone. Who's going to go to Dublin and win? I don't feel like the South African teams because no. of the travel. Yeah. So you're straight away. I don't see like a, an Edinburgh doing it. Um, what if you just so, what if you the Stormers and over there like fully loaded like with all their spring box? Yeah, maybe there's a chance, like, know, isn't there? Like coming up here to play in the RDS or the yeah, Viva. Like, oh, fu- probably not. Like, but like I, I would give them more of a chance than I would give Munster a chance against uh, Leinster and the Viva. Yeah, but based I'm, on what I happened always a couple back weeks ago. Munster, like you don't. You, know, <laughs> you, you always give off about them and <laughs> say that like good Van Graan's going and Roundtree's taking over and was Van Graan <laughs> even in Belfast at the game because like it looked like Roundtree's team. Yeah, I do think Munster because of the history and the the. Uh, like the aggressiveness of Munster that they might they could do it but Leinster we've just been given man. so many opportunities we've had what we've had two semi-finals and a final against them the last few years up there and we can never do it do you know what just, though, it's too it hard class to have the South African teams in the league playing well you mm. look at if you look back a month to say a month ago Munster went to South Africa and lost twice 
Ulster have gone and lost twice. Yep. Leinster have gone and lost it's once. Tremendous. And it just really, like the league just didn't have that before because, you know, these the, there just wasn't enough good rugby. And now these are really, these teams, because they're so hard to beat, particularly over there, they really kind of um, upset the apple cart a bit. And they're you're kind of, as you league, say, yeah. like if the Stormers finish second, mm. well, they're going to like, it bodes you, you well for next season when you think about it because this season they kind of there's just our first season in the league first of all they're coming off the back of a Lions tour so they didn't have a lot of their players Covid like absolutely ran right in South Africa so they had loads of problems at the start with players being injured no fans in the stadiums and it's only now things are back to normal and they're smashing everyone yeah, so if you yeah. gave them a full season next year and next year they can qualify for the Champions Cup based on where they finish so they're going to be even more geared up, mm-hmm. and they're going to. They're also, if you look, if you look at the, a lot of the recent signings at the moment, a lot of the big Springbok players are coming back, re-signing for these yeah. four big franchises. I think it'll be um, not a conversation for today, but just interesting what happens to them. It seems like they're actually just playing all year. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because if you look at, like, if you're the likes of a Mpimpi and you're playing, like, you'll play. I'm not sure who's touring South Africa this summer, but it'll be like Wales or England. So they'll play those games, and then they'll go into the Rugby Championship, and then the Rugby Championship will finish, and they'll go straight into the. Pro 14. Yeah. Doing so, I don't know. Yeah, two years off though, in fairness. So it'll, like, <laughs> yeah, it'll catch you up with them eventually. <laughs> you know, even if I think I think at the minute that when the uh, the derbies are on in around Christmas, they're getting a bit of time off, but that's yeah. not ideal. It's in the middle of a season. Yeah. Um so I don't know. I just think it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. Conversation for another day. Let's not yeah. talk about global seasons. No, but it is class to see Stormers and Sharks in top four of the URC. Like it just makes yeah. it so much more interesting. Yeah. And just hopefully see a semi final or something down there. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um moving on, Connacht. Actually, they, as we as we said, it's only two teams so far. Connacht are the second team so far to get a win down in South Africa. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know it's against the Lions, probably one of the weaker sides, but 33-30. Good to see Connacht. I don't think Connacht are in a position to to get into the to, to win the URC against the knockouts, but no, they are playing for a Champions Cup spot at the end of the day. Yeah, they're tenth at the moment in the in the table, which is seems really low for them. So, yeah, I thought they were doing better than that. Like, um, but it was a good game. Jack Carty played well, kicked well. Keen Prendergast had a stormer of a game. That mm. lad is playing from six again. He's just playing unbelievable. Last of truth, that open try. Like he's, just, he's a good yeah. player. That's just playing really good rugby this year. Yeah, but he's moving well. His agility, his speed, his strength. He had a massive turnover in that game as well. Yeah. Just another incredible back row just sitting around they're, Ireland. They're so yeah. hard to predict, Connell, aren't they? Yeah. Like they have produced <laughs> this year some of the worst performances like I've seen from an Irish province in years. Like, mm. um, and then go into South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. You just never know what you're going to get from them. They yeah. just need they need a bit more consistency, don't they? Like they shouldn't be like messing around like a tenth, eleventh, twelfth. And if you went through their yeah. season, I went, oh, how have you shipped? I think it's because they don't have the depth. I think it's that's why you see yeah. them. They're after signing like what have they signed? Five, six, seven players out of next year. They've got like five players coming from Leinster. They've got that guy coming from New Zealand. That's what Connor mm. lacked. Connor have a very good. Like core group of about twenty players. Past that, like they don't have much, unfortunately, and that's what yeah. that's what kills them throughout a long season. Like we've been saying it since the very first time you came on the show. How like what would you would you just hate to be a Connacht fan? As you said, one week they're absolutely brilliant, the next week they're absolutely shocking. And that yeah. comes down to the depth. It comes down, exactly it comes down to selection. Like yeah. I was saying, seeing them tend in the league is really shocking. So I'm like they've had some unbelievable games as well as really bad games. But I think it's because of who they're selecting. Like the game in the weekend, they had Bundy in the centre, they had Tom Daly in the centre, mm. they had Carty playing. So they had their top guys. Bundy was playing. actually made 13 as well in the weekend, wasn't he? Yeah. So yeah. like when they have their top team there, they're they're they could beat anyone really. Like, but it's when they don't, they just get, get hockey. Like, which is as you said, hopefully getting signed now. Those those five or six lads coming in for next season, yeah. they might be a bit further up the table. But as you were saying before, and I don't think it's too bad them being tenth. They still can get into the yeah. European Cup somehow. Yeah, they still get the Champions Cup because the South Africans can't qualify big, this yeah. year. So, so it's not as bad thing. for them. Like, but. Champions Cup rugby is a lot. Like, you know. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, and listen, just just nice to see them getting a win down there. As, as we said, like. Uh, there's only the second team to get a win in South Africa in the yep. URC, so it's not like ask Munster, ask Ulster, ask Leinster. It's not easy to do. Nope. Uh, first Irish team to do it. Yes. There you go, Colin. Um, but no, for you guys. Uh, and you know, there's something just um, you just I like seeing them do well. I just think like Andy Friend in his interviews, um, he just comes across like a really good, nice, honest kind of bloke. And I think like I love the style of rugby they play. And you know, um, I think we're past the kind of. We are past the times of like patronizing Connacht. It would be good to see them do well. No, they're um, a good side. They're a good side mm. and they should be higher in the league. And hopefully they can finish with a couple of wins and just sort of kick them up a little bit up on that table. Yeah. Because whilst, you know, 10th isn't great, there are actually a lot of good, you know, if you look at those three or four South African teams and three or four like Irish strong teams before yeah. you even look at a Scottish team or like are the Welsh teams still in it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's not always easy to get high up in that league, so it'll be good, it'd be good for them to finish yeah. the couple of wins. We haven't spoken about one Welsh team, that's so funny. 
<laughs> yeah. um, like I'd say, we're not allowed to go to about shims and eaters, Darren. Like we've, it's, it's in the contract. So <laughs> they, don't, they don't like us. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, a good, a good, a good win for Connacht. As I said, like um, only one big incident in that game. You know, like I mean, that's a little bit of something that Connacht need to look at. Was like Bundyaki switching off for that try. Yeah, uh, that, that kind of mentality is a little kind of something like that could have cost him. And he completely switches off. The, your man takes the ball off him while he's back into the goals, and then. Quick try in the yeah, corner. Yeah, it is a funny one. I, I, I can kind of see where Bundy's coming from. He's giving the ball back and then he ran runs away from Bundy. Yeah. If he tapped it and run, ran at him, then it would yeah. be a bad Monday morning for Bundy Aki. But I think like... Yeah, I think know. the only thing I think with a guy like him who is just... There's probably not many centres that are like influence um, like a club's performance more than him. Do you know what I mean? I oh, think yeah. when he plays for Connacht, like, they listen, if Leinster are missing Robbie Henshaw, it's a bit of a blow because he's a class player. Just as an example, you say the same about the like, likes of Adele Andy at Munster, but see, Aki, he just seems to be such a like talisman for them. Mm. So from that point of view, uh, I, I agree with you a little, Greg, it doesn't really impact anything. Yeah. I think from the other side of it is, well, this is the, he's the like, he is the leader, he is the talisman of Connacht. So from that point of view, I don't think it looks great. Just no. as a role model, he is yeah. the benchmark. He's probably their best player. He's a huge personality when he gets on in the field. Mm -hmm. What um, do you want him to do different? Just kind of turn his back and be set? Or yeah, I think that's... Just be more switched on. That's mm -hmm. all it is. Oh, you I mean. hate it when lads do the kicking the ball away, throwing it away. Like, yeah. Just leave the ball where it is, yeah. man. But don't be switched mean, on and always be ready for yeah, it. So it's because like, goal, when yeah. you're that close to the line, they've got a penalty. Be, be alert and be awake for it. Like yeah. At that level, it's professional rugby. Because you, you, like, you, don't, what you don't know is when you have a guy who's as influential as him, and I'm playing devils a little bit. Well, what was the impact of his body language on yeah. maybe the guy who was maybe? And listen, um, uh, I don't know. Uh, we haven't yeah. got the clip on that and it doesn't really matter, to be honest. Yeah. It's just, I think, for a guy like that, How who's such an example yeah. setter, you know, probably would... would he, I think he would probably regret that. Yeah. 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 But well, listen, it didn't cost him and, you know, it, it's not a huge yeah. talking point, really. Exactly. All the conical I'd say about him, that he's so influential, his energy and stuff. So I would have loved it. Do you ever train with him or play with him now? Um, no, I think um, I think he joined the Ireland squad just after I had been retired. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd been stopped being selected, um, but I remember playing again. Like I obviously played against him a good bit, and he is so like he's so loud and he's so energetic, and like yeah. he does, he chats a lot, and he just brings. He's like a bundle of and hollering. Whooping <laughs> and hollering. Yeah, he's um, there's a lot to him, and I do think he brings a lot of kind of cool. energy, particularly when he's playing for Connacht. Yeah. yeah, great stuff. Yeah, um, we run up the rest of the weekend's results. Um, we have to stop on this game for a second. The Stormers Glasgow at thirty-two seven, just for the the dance moves before the game that we've all been uh, watching. Oh, I absolutely love this. Like, <laughs> look at this. Like. <laughs> We, like, we need this in Tomo Park. We need this in Kingsman. Do we know who this guy is dancing? Can we get you a gig doing that on Kingsman? Maybe like we need to find out who it is. I, I'm not. I want to know. Like he's got no number on us. I'm trying to go. Is he like? Is he a player? There's no way. I don't he's know. He's fine. No, I think he's just a guy in it that's in the Stormers gear that dances with them. Yeah, he, he's he just was a too good as well. He was yeah, perfect. He's way too good. He didn't have the build of a of a dancer. No. <laughs> you know, he was. He, had the, he, listen, he looks like a, he looks like a prop. He does. He looks like a photo, Yeah. <laughs> but he can shift. He moves he well. Shift. But uh, that's another like that was like the Stormers are have been like absolutely ridiculously impressive since since all these whole games. Thirty two seven against Glasgow. They're absolutely smashing everyone. Like and you've got Rezzy Erasmus talking about their players and tweeting their or tweeting their praises and stuff. Um, He's a good player, him. That I saw that tweet. I actually I didn't, hadn't Edinburgh, seen the game. Yeah. I hadn't seen the game live, and I saw Erasmus tweet. He's, he's actually a good follow on social media. He's he's mad. One of the best people yeah. in the world yeah, follow on Twitter. Um, Absolutely love following him. But he, because uh, your man Rusi, uh, obviously Ulster were over there. He played really well that day, and he scored that screamer a few weeks ago against mm. was it against the Ospreys. Um, but side, he looks are really good. It was a Welsh side, so you probably didn't watch it. Um, <laughs> Greg and I love our ruggers, so we've been all over it like a cheap suit. But um, yeah, he's a great player. Reminds me of Pierre Spice, like a huge big lad, but he gets an open space. Um, so he's real exciting to watch. Yeah. Excellent, um, excellent. Um, rest of the games, Edinburgh beat uh, just about beat uh, Zebra at home, 29-26. Not great win. for Edinburgh. Only no, three no, at home. not great at home. Um, Bulls it's a big, beat... Yeah, it's a big game, isn't it? Like... That's, yeah. where it's <laughs> That's why you sell your TV subscriptions and that one. Like, That's it. Still... I actually, I missed that one. Men were a good team, man. They, and they, they, uh, at home as well, they, they've been doing really well in the, yeah. the new stadium they have. For Zebra to come up and only beat them by three points. Well, no, nice. should they put 100 on Connacht, did they not? They did actually, yeah. <laughs> they scored six like, years, 60 against Connacht, did they not? They did, at home, yeah. Yeah. 
Weird. Big uh, Sharks away as well, yeah. So that, yeah, they're the only the other second team to, to to win in South Africa. They beat Sharks away a couple of weeks ago as well. Like so, I mean that's that's they've, they'll be a tough uh, opposition for Ulster in their the away game. Yeah, not so the second last game. That's a game yeah. they need to win it. And Edinburgh are there about seventh or eight. Yeah, as they're as up as around as up around the same. So they're like they're in it. They're probably sort of Edinburgh seventh. Yeah. Yeah. So they're right in the mix. And mm. as I said, nobody wants to qualify in eighth because. You've a good double. <laughs> good double yeah. the, bull, the Bulls are an eight at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Bulls, yeah, so they're they, only one they point beat, behind Edinburgh. Um, Benetton, 46-29. Uh, good old pal of yours, uh, Marcel Kutsia, scored again. And he's actually uh, 12 tries this year. He's top scorer in the URC. No way. Yeah, yeah. I, I did that shocked me as well. It's incredible. Yeah. That's yeah. not 12 tries for number eight. Like, I know. Or six, wherever, he, wherever, he, wherever he's playing. Wow. Yeah, he's um, a beast. He's there a was beast. A, a, an absolute ridiculous red card in that game as well. Uh, Nicolo Canon. Um, it's it's it actually actually boxes him. It's actually a full force. It's like something from the the, the Fury fight against Dillian White last night. It was probably one of the most deserving red cards you're going to see in a rugby pitch no in a long way. time. So he's, he'd yeah. be banned for a while. Don't so. like seeing that. Um, and then you've got like Welsh teams playing. We, we call out the Welsh results. We might as well. Dragons uh, nice. lost uh, 19 38 to the Scarlets, and Cardiff were beaten 22 6 by the Ospreys. Good stuff. Do you want to hear more about the Welsh teams? Do you, do you want to go into detail? <laughs> um, we don't have enough time, do we? Uh, you take lead on that. It's fine, we'll move on. <laughs> um, unfortunately, a bit of bad news in the women's rugby. Um, obviously, we're filming this on a Sunday, so we're only getting the, the result in just before the show. Um, Ireland defeated 69-0 by England. Sounds really bad, but like there was only 10 and a half time. They seemed to be in it. Yeah, I, I watched the first half. And... Yeah, I watched the first half were coming in and they were good, man. The girls were good. Yeah. They got a lot of turnovers against uh, England. England would break through and the girls would be straight on the ball. So we've obviously done a lot of work on that. But they just got dominated in the set piece, man. Their lineouts and scrums. And they're going up against a professional team. England women are fully professional. So that's why that's that's obviously where the discrepancy comes from. Like they just have haven't done as much time um Ten tries with lineups and, half, and scrums. Like, it's awful. like I mean I just say as you said, we've had this conversation to start, we won't go into too much detail. It's something when we have Lindsay and stuff back on, we might discuss with her. Like, but yeah. it just seems to be like and it's not this isn't just Ireland. Every single game England have played so far, they're winning by 40, 50, 60, 70 points. Mm. And it's like you're putting four like amateur teams up against a super professional team. It's just not a competition anymore. It's not. Yeah, they are the best in the world. Like, do you know what I mean? And Ireland. Well, like you're being the best in the world. Like, I mean, like South Africa are the best team in the world. Like, are they going to go out and beat Ireland by seventy points in the men's? Yeah. Same in New Zealand. Like, they'll lose, but like, there's. It's literally like the gulf, the gap is so it big. Is so big. It's when you have like like different levels of professionalism within the same tournament that is just tough, isn't it's it? Not it's fair. Like, it's not fair. Um, and obviously we don't have Lindsay here but like I think she'd have a massive say she'd have a lot it, has to, it has to do with the professional side of it like yeah. going, it's like putting an L, L team up, up, up against yeah, Munster let's put like. Shannon against Munster like, the know, weekend and see, see happen, how they get like, on like, do you, know? you know what I mean and the girls played well in the first half to keep them 10-0 so I think they should look at that positive and then just don't worry about the 10 tries in the second half <laughs> <laughs> okay guys now it's time for our try of the week uh, three really good contenders this week uh, starting off first with uh, an excellent try by uh, Mark Bennett of Edinburgh against Zebra that Great was a worldie, finish. wasn't it? Incredible. He's been playing really well all year, Mark Bennett. Yeah, he's been around a while. He's a good player. He's he really played, good. Did he play sevens? He played, he in... played sevens, yeah. He's really fast, man. Yeah. yeah. Class. Like that's a very Serious impressive try. step for a 13, like the in and in and out. Turn him in and out. And too. what about Leinster's Tommy O'Brien? Touches down against the Sharks with this lovely crossfield kick by Frawley. It's a serious finish, that acceleration he gets away. He looks like he's going to get a hold down. Yeah, it was a great take. Werner Cock chasing him down. That's a lovely step as well. Mm. That's, you can't, you can't, I, I gotta appreciate a good step. So re- it's a lovely kick as well. You can tell, it looks like a penalty advantage. So it looks mm. like they'd run that shape that every team's running at the minute with the 13. Mm. And then, nope. And the third try is uh, our very own Keith Earls, Limerick man. And Chris Farrell puts him away in the corner. Nearly tears the hamstring <laughs> picking up that ball. But <laughs> Not like, the best of passes, <laughs> but Earls made no. work of it in the end. And that was a great That bat. was a very important score in the game. Like, and, I think uh, De Linde deserves a lot of credit there. If you watch it, like you go back a few few phases behind that, like and he's just so cool, calm, collected, nonchalant. Does his, he he touches the ball there three or four times in the build up to that, and it's just he's in and out, cool as you like, cool as a breeze, and he's just they'll yeah. miss him next year. They will miss yeah. him. But all, miss Chris him. Farrell also did really well for that. In that he well. did, in fairness, in fairness, nice yeah. Man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely, without doubt. Um, Right, so I'm going to ask you first, which one are you nominating for a try I, I can't uh, vote for a monster try against Ulster, can I? Like, um, <laughs> you do what you want. I ain't going Mark Bennett, it has to be like. Um, <laughs> I really liked Mark Bennett's try. I thought it was really cool, but um, I have to go Munster, man. Just as yeah. an overall, an overall so try. So it means I've got to decide and vote, so do I. Oh, who do I pick? 
yeah, I'm going to go with Keith Earls, I think. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. No, it was good. It was a good one. It had to be. I had to be. My pride couldn't do it. Sorry, guys. It had to be. Yeah. <laughs> right, so uh, moving on to uh, my favourite part of the show, the jukebox of the week. So first up is Rickus Pretorius versus Ross Thompson. Just a lovely textbook tackle here. It's just nice and low. That's what you want to see. Nice to see some bend. Look at that bend at the hips. It's yeah. not that hard, lads. It's Something not that hard. Like. Thank you very much. It's not That's that so hard. True. <laughs> you know what I mean, next up here we have Monsters Scott Buckley on Ulster's Jordy Murphy Another. with a late hit. Is that is it? Was it a foul play of the week, Greg? Or? <laughs> it's not at all. Nah, it's not a late hit. It's a good shot. In fairness to, to Jordy Murphy, he did incredibly well to get the offload off while getting smashed. He did. And the last one is Marius Lowe on Max Deegan um, in the Leinster game. That's another nice excellent textbook tackle. There like you go, that. Darren. You can get low if you want, guys. You Listen, don't have to get in red cards every Everybody game. bend at the hips and don't hit someone in the face. And he forces off. the knock it's on as well. That, it's not that complicated. No, it's not yeah, that complicated. It is that simple. Uh, who, who, who are we going to go for in this one, so, Darren? Uh, my vote, I'm going for uh, Pretorius just because I actually like... It's actually a nice read as well. Yep. You know what I mean? It's not like someone's just, it's not like a forward tattle where two people have just waddled <laughs> into each other. Now, it's just, it's a real nice read. And like coming from 10 meters away, I know how hard it is to try and like accelerate in and slow your feet and get and do all that. So he's read it really well. He's timed it really well. And it's, it actually is, jokes aside, it's nice to see somebody like, um, you know, tackling. really smashing somebody, yep. but actually, you know, it's a different conversation. But like if you, as a tackler, go in not bent at the, at the hip, and you get a card, like you've no complaints to your professional players, it's not good enough. Like, so bend at the hips, tackle low, Pretorius for me. Yeah. Completely agree with him. Right, I, I actually remember I actually said that clip in when, while watching the match. I was going, We have to put this on the jukebox because I just straight away I, I appreciate, as you said, a good read and a good textbook, safe, bend your hips, tackle how rugby is supposed to be played. So he deserves all the credit for it. Yeah, well done, Pretorius. Excellent, excellent. Um, before we move on to some rugby news, Darren, I believe you were up in. In a skilling recently. Yes, I had a lovely little trip up there. Big thank you to our sponsors, Bank of Ireland, for having me up. Um, and I ended up getting involved in training. It was the first time I'd had the boots on since I uh, Looking forward to this. They were a wee bit, the leather was a wee bit, you know, they were, I thought they were going to break in too, like they were a bit crusty. But uh, yeah, I got going in the end. Yeah. Look, looking forward to seeing this. Today I'm at Enniskillen Rugby Club to talk to the president, Freddie Fraser. The club is 97 years old this year and they've had loads of success and I'm about to hear all about it. Freddie, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me down in Enniskillen Rugby Club. The club's had some success over the last few years with trophies. Yes, over the last couple of years we've won the Towns Cup. That's played by towns, not cities. So it's like Port of Downs and whatever. The Junior Cup is a cup that we've won two years ago and it's played by all in Ulster. So you're clearly a club then that never stops competing. Why do, why do the trophies matter? Well, we hadn't won a trophy for about 82 years and it was just great to have a cup, a silver cup in your hand yeah. after the 82 years. Um, my prize moment was probably winning the two cups. The both days was an incredible day out. We had buses coming from Enniskillen to the Kingspan and we came back here and it was probably a late night or more like an early morning. That's team success. Individuals, everyone's talking about Robert Balakun at the minute, but there's been plenty of, of Irish internationals that have come through Enniskillen Rugby Club. Yeah, well, over the last few years, we've had Robert Balakun, who's playing for Ireland. And also in the ladies' end, we've had Cathy Dane, Claire Bowles, and we have three or four other girls that's uh, training with Ireland. But not only that, we've had Jimmy McCoy back in the 80s, who played for Ireland. Can you tell us a bit about the Friday Club? Well, the Friday Club was probably started up about 10 years ago. Um, and we've about nine or 10 members. It's a, if we come here on a Friday morning, we fix doors, we fix locks, we clean the place up, uh, we do things on the pitches. It's a great, like a family. Uh, there have been guys that I'd have played rugby with over the years, and we still come here on a Friday morning. We end up with a cup of coffee and a, and a slice of apple tart. For the people watching at home that don't know a lot about Enniskillen and Enniskillen Rugby Club, can you tell us a bit about um, the ethos and the community around the club? Well, we're the only rugby club within Fermanagh. Uh, it's a very, very social club. The would see the teams on a Saturday evening here, maybe staying here for an hour or two, and going back into the Skillen as a as a, a family near enough, and everybody looks out for each other. That looked like great, Cactar. And so you enjoyed that, did you? Yeah, it was. Do you know what? It was a freezing. 
Uh, proper rugby, like it wasn't like playing in the pros when you're old school. Like, proper rugby, like <laughs> Tuesday night, like, Tuesday night freezing, yeah. soaking, everyone's buzzing, just finished work, and I'm like, Whoa, what's going on? <laughs> nah, but fair, fair play to them. They're like, as he as um, he said, they're the only um, club in the whole of the whole county of Fermanagh. Um, so it's hard for them to get fixtures. They've a long way to go. <laughs> but the place was heaving. Uh, women's rugby. They've um, the, the the two schools down there um, really strong, and there was loads of like those two or three girls teams up training, and um, the the men seniors, and yeah, I got involved and had a wee bit of a waddle around. Brilliant, yeah, um, great so, yeah. stuff. They're it's right. to see now. Yeah, they're probably delighted to have Mr. Darren Cave down. You're well, back. they didn't know who it was, but um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Uh, Were you coaching? So, I did a wee bit. Uh, I kind of was like. It was one of those ones where I was like, oh, I can't really, I can't really be bothered. And then you can't help yeah, but get, get involved. involved. Of course you know? you. I, I, do, I, I wouldn't natural. like the pressure of like leading training and setting the cones out and this is the drill, but I don't mind if it's someone else's drill and like sort of jump, jump in. in and jump like, in, yeah. Yeah, and listen, actually, I find that if, you know, when you're doing this, I do that and see if that helps, you Consult know. Consult with zero. Yeah, that's kind of, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm more DOR material for anyone <laughs> who's, uh, so like, Monster, you know, probably wouldn't work unless Roundtree was looking for someone to bounce a few ideas you off. Go, you know, no, yeah. Did um, you get the itch for going back? Yeah, nah. but they love signing centres, like, nah. so they probably put you in the centre, like, because if like yeah. they suddenly have enough centres as it is, like, you know. So, Monster might take you on, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Dor forward slash backup centre. Uh, I'll do backup centre. Yeah. I can do backup centre. Like I've did that the last the last couple of years of my career. <laughs> <laughs> no, not even a little itch to play again. Nah, none at all. None at all. I've been asked to play in a couple of like the Legendsy games and the Bermudas and classics and stuff and I'm just not at um, just not just don't um, just don't have the girl for it anymore not, nah not yet maybe I don't know in a couple of years I might I love watching rugby it's a it's a very rough game <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean like, like, you're like, 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 like former sorry an Ireland yeah. international oh, uh, caps, 200 yeah. and something caps ulcer and he just said it's a really 50. rough game <laughs> clip that clip clip that, that right. Right. they're right. big <laughs> men they're big men it's rough it's sore <laughs> You were a centre, oh, like you're involved. You know how many times I got my toes stood on on a cold Tuesday morning with <laughs> oh, a kickspan? Like, these, these toenails are butchered. And they say all rugby players are like the super tough. Yeah. This is a professional, really international rugby player. Yeah. Really I don't, I like, you know what's the best thing to do? <clears throat> Media and just go on and be like, ah, it's crap. Ah, it's brilliant. And, do that, do that, do that, and actually have no real solutions and have to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not stress about it. Just forget about it. Turn Fun, it off. It's over. Yeah, just talk shit enough, about rugby on the telly, basically. Like, exactly. Yeah. Funny enough, I got my first itch to go back playing the other day. So I was watching the boys you? playing the Singapore Sevens and they did shout out to the men's Sevens who beat Fiji nearly beat New Zealand finished fourth in Singapore Sevens unbelievable awesome. did well in Vancouver as well I was watching I was like jeez I wouldn't mind going back oh. playing now but then yesterday I went to the 1B AIL semi-final Wesley versus Nace and a rock happened in front of me as I stand on the side of the pitch and I was like jeez yeah. I'm glad I'm not you were there looking at a million bucks and you're nah. skinny and you're nice trainers oh, yeah, and you're like, no, like, imagine, oh. getting, imagine getting mud on these like, man, like AIL is so attritional man like, <laughs> yeah, oh my is. god like such respect for those guys and Shannon won their semi-final into the final now hopefully they'll go up into 1A come on Shannon come on Shannon come on Shannon <laughs> Bryce oh. uh, moving on to news um, I, well obviously we'll start off with a bit of bad news I don't know if you're going to dampen her um, Pedri uh, Wannenberg uh, passed away in tragic circumstances um, you actually you played with, with Pedri I know he was with the, the Bulls but he was at Ulster for two seasons Darren yeah I think he was there from uh, about 20 uh, I think 2011 2013-ish um, and yeah just like shocking news you know um, even like it's hard it just so comes out of absolutely nowhere and I think um, you know being a parent now myself you know, I can't help you know think of his wife currently Yvette um, who's obviously they're from South Africa so he had he uh, left Ulster and went to Cass and then Oena and then he was uh, coaching and playing in America so they're kind of quite isolated there in Texas mm. and um, his son Francois I believe is still in hospital um, yes, so I just it's like it's just absolutely uh, it's absolutely gotten I can't um, I, I'm not sure it's a hard thing to kind of react to you know yeah. because it's so yeah, personal of course and, um, of course it just, just tell us a bit about him as, as a player what he was like as a teammate uh, the one thing as a player that I would have associated with him is durability he was the ultimate um, like there's a couple of stats if you look him up of like consecutive games he has some record I think he played like 99 super rugby games in a row um, but without getting injured I remember rugby of all sports then as well like to yeah, do that, was to do that so, in rugby and I think just... again uh, I haven't done my research because I'm uh, not a good professional but uh, I, I think in, he was at Ulster for two seasons yeah. and a, a very easy stat to find out how many caps he had if I was professional I would have done it before I'd come on but I'd say he has at least sort of 55 between 55 and 60 caps for Ulster like he played you know pretty much every week for two seasons solid yeah. so he's very very durable um 
And I think as well, I remember... It's just 54 caps for us. 54 in two years, 54. so not, not a bad effort. And he's, uh, and he's scored nine tries as well. Like. Yeah, and I, I think, I remember he played in the in the European Cup final the year we got the European Cup final. And again, I remember him telling me it was like his, it was something like his 12th domestic final he'd ever played in. But he'd won all 11 before because he played for that Bulls team that was like... Victor Mathfield, Guthrie Steenkamp. Oh uh, Believe the Dupree. team. I remember them, yeah. Probably they were team back ridiculous. then, but it was like an absolute worldly dream team. 2007 World Cup kind of team, basically. Like. <laughs> yeah, so just, do you know what? Like, just on a personal, I think, um, I just can't believe. Um, my, literally, my heart just goes out to his family yeah. so much. It's so sad. It's very sad. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's hard to know uh, what to say about it, other than that, like, I know everyone at Ulster and everyone in Ireland we send in sort of all their thoughts and love and prayers to Yvette and, and all of Annenberg's. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, old Nugget announced his retirement during the week, Sean Cronin. Shawnee Cronin, yeah, good Shannon man as well. Shannon's finest. Yeah, my dad would be upset now, one of my father's <laughs> favourite players, Sean Cronin. What an incredible Irish player. What man. an athlete, let's. Unbelievable. What an athlete. Like, he's too fast. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, there, there will never be a hooker. Like maybe the key would, but he's the only person I can think of that could step, run and tackle kick at speed. Well. Like him. He can kick as well. He had a wee left peg, didn't he? He did, We left peg. He kicked a few weeks ago down the touchline. Yeah, Our did. skull man as well, I forgot to mention that. Yeah. Got to get that in there. So I think, I could be wrong now again with our stats. I think he's the most most capped Irish player off the bench ever. Something like that. I believe he, I think I was I think I might have been in camp when he overtook guys to be on that. And yeah, he was lads. real dirty about it. Like he was <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like a, um but listen what a what a he's a class player, yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely guy. And yeah, it's funny, you know, when the likes of him, Devin Toner, and when it comes Johnny Sexton, it is unbelievable when you see the list of stuff they won. Like, you do take it for granted a little bit. And I think, like, I played for 13 years and I never won anything. I hardly won a match. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, like, genuinely, like, all have won trophies since 2006 months, I think yeah. it's 2008 so, um, These yeah. guys are retiring. Like, yeah. uh, Devons was even worse, but these guys are going, like, four Champions Cups, one mm-hmm. Challenge Cup, six league titles, seven. Like, it's, it's unbelievable how successful. Oh, I like and his, that's uh, before you get involved in his, yeah. um, his Grand Slams and his Six Nations medals. Like, these are phenomenally successful rugby players. Mm. Yeah. I like his perseverance, though, because I remember when, when he was coming out of Art Skull, like, he was like, oh, this guy's going to be a superstar, this guy's been international, he's going to be really top hooker for Munster. But he was there around the time when Fla was there, so he wasn't getting an opportunity. He went off to, it was Connacht, he went off to first, wasn't it? Yeah. He went to Connacht, had a few seasons at Connacht, then he got picked up by Leinster, and he carved himself out an incredible career, like trophies, what the 60 something caps for Ireland yeah, I remember, after being rejected yeah. by once originally like. 72 caps he, he was on my um, caps. Yeah. I played our schools with him and uh, in Ireland under 19s he like uh, I think he I think he made a balls of his leaving cert <laughs> and had to repeat his cert and like didn't play rugby for a year do you know because I remember we, he went it's from nuts. schools to 19s and he was MIA yeah. and then Ireland 21s the next year and Niall O'Shea was like, this guy, like, you know, he's our captain, like, get him in there, Shannon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he came back from nowhere. And as you say, yeah, went to Connacht. And yeah, he ended up winning every, uh, ironic, like he uh, never actually played for Munster, given he's a, a, a limited it's man. It's funny, but, um, yeah, it's funny. What like a career. It is, it's an unbelievable career. Yeah. Uh, contract news, good old Robbie Henshaw has signed on until 2025. Um, it's good to see because I'm sure someone like Robbie Henshaw, especially considering the fact that he's been he's been out of the Ireland team for the last couple of games throughout the Six Nations with Aki and Ringrose, like I'm sure he got a few offers coming from England and France. I'm sure there's plenty of guys that would have no issue giving Robbie Henshaw a million a season to come over and play. I'd also, so. I'd also say his nice central contract there isn't too I'd bad. I'd say it's not too bad, but I'm... probably <laughs> just about has an off to pay the bills. Yeah. <laughs> All of the houses and housing in Dublin, actually, he probably doesn't. <laughs> he probably still lives at home in that room. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, no, that's class for Ireland to yeah. sign him down until 2025. But he's yeah. still young. What is he? He's only 26, 27. Maybe? He's playing well. Yeah. He's playing. I, like I thought he looked him. really sharp in the Aviva there. Yeah. Like he just, he's such a quality. He's such a rounded player because he's big his skills real sharp yeah. pass he's yeah, I still think he's our best centre by, by, by a bit like I think the way the Six Nations worked out this year is he wasn't quite fully fit and then Ringrose was so good in that first game that they couldn't drop him and they just didn't really get back into it so it was kind of more just the way things worked out but if you're picking your, your, your starting best Ireland team tomorrow Robbie Henshaw mm-hmm. starting at 12 or 13 doesn't matter he has yeah, to start one position he's incredible yeah Do you I know think it's good player. from an Irish point of view as well that like players like him are just re-signing and you're not, there's not a rigmarole and there's not a, you know, a lot of, and you never really hear a lot of 
Ireland's best players are just renewing contracts. And it's nice because you don't want, ultimately, mm. you don't want players going to racing for big dough and then not featuring and, you know, do the, and then they're having conversations about changing eligibility rules. And yeah. so it's nice to see Ireland's best players just renewing. Yeah, yeah, yeah we haven't lost a player in a while, in fairness, yeah. have we? Look. Imagine how happy Robbie Hench is. Like, he's living in his home country. I think he has a girlfriend. Like, he's playing at Leinster, the best team in Europe. Playing for Ireland, like why yeah. would you leave? Like it's central true. contract. True. Like, some people, you know, might want to experience something different. Like or like some of those French clubs can, can offer absolutely scandalous yeah. money. Like so, there's always that threat. But as you said, it's good to see him and good to see the loyalty. In. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, I've been meaning to rant about this all week now. You know, I love a good rant and giving all about Munster. And I don't know who made the decision making here or who's responsible. Whether it's the IRFU, whether it's Munster, whether it's people up top down below. But, but somebody's about to get it. Someone's about to get it, <laughs> lads. What in the name of God is going on? How did who figured this out and how did this happen? Munster off the back of beating Exeter, as we said, super performance. They're now got a quarter final against Toulouse. Should be at home after how they did so well in the pool stages. But no, they can't play the match at Tumman Park because Ed Sheeran's got a gig there. Right? Fucking, sorry, excuse uh, my language. The quarterfinals are always on around that same time. Yeah, it's an absolute F up by the logistics team. I don't know when. So, someone sat down and saw that and goes, Asher, ah, sure, look, we'll just play Ed. I presume it's a money thing. To get the money into I know they're broke, like and they're like still owe the IRFU like about 10 million for Tom and yeah. Park, and then they all the money they've lost out in the last couple of years from number one, COVID, and two, the fact that they're oh, shit and no one wants to go to their matches anymore. Uh, ah, yeah. sorry about that, lads. But you know what I mean. It's, but even the money I was at it cheering last night as well. Lads, wasn't that good? Sorry, Ed, if you're listening to the podcast, <laughs> it wasn't that good. Because his songs are very like slow and I know I shouldn't get into it, but like look, look Monster Match will be on in Tom. But if we're if we're playing till if you you're telling me like right in a couple of weeks' time or because the eighth of May is the match. If we're like Toulouse, like you, you saw how good Toulouse are against Ulster. They're the, they're the champions, right? They've got bloody half their team <laughs> are Grand Slam winners. If Toulouse came to Tomlin Park, even even like it, it, even the way Munster are playing at the moment, they're up and down. I'd give them a chance yeah, every day. Of it's the week. such a fortress, man, Tomlin yeah, Park. Like, not leave either. You I don't see how they're traveling down to play in Tomlin Park. Uh, <coughs> horrible, is it? Yeah. I mean, I have mixed experiences. Actually, probably probably. My bet, lowest and highest point for Ulster could have both been at Thumb Park playing in. Uh, obviously, we won the knockout game there in 2012, which was just phenomenal um, yeah. in, in the European Cup. And then I think it was my last season, uh, we were humiliated. Um, yeah. I shipped about 60 something points. I broke my thumb, and I was honestly, I remember on the bus on my home just thinking, right, I'm, I'm done. done, I'm done. Yeah. yeah. So it's a it's a tough listen. I, I have more to lose, are, to lose are there to be taken. And I definitely think a sold out Tumman Park, I would have would have had Munster at relatively strong, strong something. Definitely favourites. I would have Munster mm. definitely favourites. At I, home in Tumman Park. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I, I do think the Aviva will be a much nicer place to go. For Munster, the fans... Much nicer place for Toulouse to go. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. so uh, from an away yeah. team, they'll be delighted about it. No, he's yeah. being wide um, pitched in as well up in the Aviva as well, like to suit them down to the ground. I hope that Munster, the Munster fans just really, really, really buy into it and they go for it. And I hope, like obviously it's not the easiest time to fork out hundreds of euros to get up to Dublin to watch a game, but I hope, I would love to see Munster say, do you know what, it's do not you, ideal, but we're going to fill this place. The only good thing you'd say there, and in fairness, like, and you probably know a lot of people, sure you're living in Dublin, you're from the right. There is a lot of Munster people living in Dublin. Yeah. So, like, there is still mm. just probably 15, 20,000 Munster is, fans, if not more, living in Dublin. If that place is filled with, with you know, if that place is 50,000 Munster fans in it, like, it is not going to be an easy place mm. to go. Um, so, I hope that that's what happens. It's still not home park, though. I remember no. I went to Munster versus Saracens in the semi final of the European Cup a couple of years ago. Yeah, I was at the In the Viva yeah. Stadium. Yeah. It just wasn't, it wasn't the, the same. same. Like everyone travelled up, all the ones supporters travel up. It just wasn't the same. But look, might be but, different. Were you at the Exeter game a couple weeks ago when it's on Park? I wasn't at it. No, so I, I was at that, lads. I mean, like it's been a while now, so I've been to a match like not working. I was on the piss out with the lads inside in the stadium. The atmosphere was incredible. Everyone was jumping and dancing. Mm. We were in the car at the Shannon Bar afterwards, and we met Jack Noel and Sam Simmons, and we were like they were doing lineup moves and stuff. And he was saying after the game, like I've never been anywhere like this. Like they're such good crackdown. They're all nuts. And like that, like the whole of Limerick kind of lights up and gets that little bit, that little bit of buzz. Yeah. And it, it's what has got Munster over the line so many times is that 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 Tom and Park, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and you're taking that away now because there's not when dwelling on it now because Ed Sheeran's coming in, so we better play a good gig in Tom and Park. It's true. Very good. That's like, true. <laughs> Greg, uh, Greg he won't be, Ed won't be happy when he's yeah. listening to this podcast on Tuesday morning. He hears it. Greg of his it. concert ship. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, we'll finish up with uh, a quick look at the. URC trophy and uh, we'll let you comment on that guys 
me personally, I hated it at the start, but then I was like, okay, I'm not too annoyed because of the fact that the top actually comes off and you can fill it with booze and drink from it. So that's good. The top Other comes off like a Hoover. and then you can, um, you can put your USB lead in and you can charge <laughs> your phone. And also you can lose it, you can use it um, if you take a top off to light a cigarette as well. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, I think it looks like a Dyson. I love that. What do you think? A Dyson. Oh, <laughs> shout out to my brand partner, Dyson. Um, the thing with that is, I love that they thought about, oh, if someone's going to pour drink in this, we better design it. They, no, they actually ask. So I remember, I remember having this conversation with producer Pat a couple of weeks ago. I was like, well, the new, when the new trophy comes in, remember the old Pro 14 trophy? You can't drink out of it. I was like, what is the point of winning a trophy in rugby when you can't drink out of it? That was what I said when I was playing. But it's actually, Mother, it's actually in the press release that they did their, 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 their research and they asked all the coaches and players. And one of the things that was, came back to them was, we need to be able to drink out of it. The coaches and players actually said that to them. Really? So they listened. Like, and it's true. Like, imagine winning a cup and not being able to fill it up with beer. Like, it's the whole, it's it's the the whole thing. It's why, the you, like, why you train? To drink out of a trophy. To drink out of a trophy full of beer at the end of the season. That's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. Well, so that's why you play rugby. Yeah, look, at least none of us will have to lift it. <laughs> yeah, <Not> exactly. <laughs> uh, all right, so that's us. Yeah, that's us, guys. All right, that was great crack, lads. Being back, Darren, lovely to have you in. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm back next week as well. I'm so excited. <laughs> Placing me, I'm going to be uh, sunning it up in Spain at a lovely wedding. So I'll go oh, join really? myself. I will. Oh, yeah. Very nice. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, okay. I'll, you won't be pasty white when I come back. <laughs> I, will I will be, so that's all right for one of us. <laughs> we look forward to that. And of course, a massive thank you to our partners, Bank of Ireland, proud supporters of the four Irish provinces. We'll see you next week, guys. Joe presents House of Rugby. United Rugby Championship, together with Bank of Ireland, proud supporter of the four Irish provinces.